Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my first Reckoning DLC build video. It's going to be the Geth Juggernaut, which was definitely requested. It seems like a lot of you guys were really interested in seeing something like this, so here you go. Now the weapons I recommend for him, um, SMGs I personally think are pretty good, like the Hurricane, but there's really one reason for that, and that is this new weapon attachment the power magnifier this thing is really good for a guy like this because of his whole well of his uh, siege pulse pistols also get an attachment like this I do not have this yet but I think pistols like the scorpion would be good the alkalite if well if they ever ch if they change it definitely again they probably will I, I imagine um, even if you have to charge it up it probably would be decent Talon, you know, there's a lot of good pistols in the game. Suppressor, maybe, whatever. Now, for the build, uh, I don't use Hex Shield, so I actually spec'd out of it. Now, if you don't have a reset card or if you don't want to do that, you can leave this at 3. If you take a look, at 3, it gets 5,000 shields. So, I mean, that's pretty good, no matter what you do. It's going to serve its pu uh, purpose. Now, for Siege Pulse, I actually have damage for the first one, but I'm really conflicted on this. I don't know if I want the damage or if I want radius. So this is really up to you. I've tried both of them, and I can honestly say I liked both of them. But radius doesn't really increase the radius that much, but it is definitely noticeable. And damage doesn't really decre uh, increase the damage that much, but it is a little noticeable. Alright, so for the second one, I go for recharge speed. Damage protection is something that I can see people wanting to do but I shoot all my things really quickly so I don't get the benefit and then the final one is resistance damage 60% more damage to armor shields and barriers that's really good number of shots you know that actually really goes with the damage protection if you just want to throw it on and get 40% damage protection that's something you can do but that's not what I'm gonna do for the turret I actually go for uh, pure offense I tried using the um, the shield restore and it's probably would be really good for your teammates, but for me, like, it only, the max is 700 shields. And this guy has so many shields that you barely even notice it heals you. 4,600 shields! Oh my god. Alright, now for the Gef Juggernaut, I go for damage and capacity. This guy's weight capacity is insanity. He can carry the heaviest weapons and get a big bonus still. So this just helps with power damage and on top of it, just extra weight. Uh, stability and ammo. This is great. One of the best things about him is that he gets stability. He gets all the bonuses: stability, spare ammo. Stability is great for like things like the hurricane. Spare ammo would be good for Cerberus Harrier and other guns. You could go for power damage if you're not going to use an SMG. Maybe if you're going to use a pistol, that would be something to think about. And I go for the weapons damage at the end. Now this is right here. That's the one that maybe you want to maybe skip if you don't want to reset this guy out of uh, hex shield. So, weapons damage, that's normally what I would recommend. Alright. Anyway, now for the final one, the fitness, all shields. He gets an insane amount of shields, and his final one actually gives him um, damage resistance as well. I mean, 2300 health, 4600 shields, that's crazy. I mean, you do not really need a cyclonic on him, but you can imagine. Alright, for the equipment, I recommend Armor Piercing 2, SMG Rail Amp 3, Omni Capacitors 5, and Adrenaline. Adrenaline is probably the most important one, but I'll get into that. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. Alright guys, this is going to be the gameplay, and it's going to be on Glacier, and it's going to be against Cerberus. Now I highly recommend, if you can help it, try to play this guy on small maps. So obviously Glacier is your best bet. No question about that. White would be good. You know, there's some other pretty small maps. Those are the maps you really want to play this guy on. I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to play Dagger or Condor or something with this guy. It would just be a ginormous headache. He moves just so slow that it would be so hard to, like, walk around and find the spawns and stuff unless you're planning on sniping or something. So, try to keep that in mind. Now, um... I was actually really disappointed with this gameplay, to be quite honest. Um, I mean, it's pretty good, I guess. But the truth of the matter is that I've been having a couple issues lately. Now, the first thing you guys got to keep in mind is that me and DK, um, we have not played this game in so long. And a lot of my other friends, you know, we just haven't played this game in a long time because, well, it's just got boring. 
now that the new DLC is out, it's probably going to be fun again for hopefully quite a while. So, you you know, I can make videos and stuff, but, you know, it's a slow process of, like, getting back into the game and warming up to and all that. So you guys got to keep that in mind a little bit for, you got to give me a little leeway for, like, my first couple games, well, at least this gameplay. Um... You know, but by the time I come out with my second one, I would imagine I would be pretty much warmed back up to the game. The only other struggle would be to get used to playing the new uh, characters and the new playstyles and all that, which, uh, you know, that factors into it as well. Also, I would do want to say one thing real quick, is that you guys should go and subscribe to DK if you haven't yet. Now, hopefully most of you guys have, but if you are one of the few people who haven't, I would highly recommend you go check out DK's channel. He's going to be posting Mass Effect as well. And a lot of it's going to include me, like dual comms and live comms and uh, a lot of things like that. So look out for that. I, I will probably put a link in the description to his channel in this video. So go and subscribe to him and check out his videos. Now, one reason I brought him up was because if you go on his channel... You might see a video which was is called like Initial Thoughts of Reckoning DLC. That was a dual com that me and DK we did, and in that dual com we talked about how um, we were going to do this dual com with our initial thoughts. You gotta remember it's initial thoughts, but it was like that night, literally the night it came out. We played a couple games and then we went and did a dual com. So that was really the point of the dual com, but. In that video, we talk about how if you guys uh, were on my channel, you could go and watch the live com. Because that was what I was going to do. I was going to get a Gef Juggernaut gameplay right away, put it up as a live com, two man gold or something like that, me and DK, and then we were going to go do a dual com over it. You get the idea. So that's what we were going to do. But unfortunately for me, and this factors into the, what I was saying earlier about how I'm having some issues lately. My computer is just acting up more than ever now, um, to be quite honest. Like, that gameplay from my POV was totally screwed. I had no idea either until after we literally did the dual com. When I went to go and make the video, I realized that, yeah, but that, uh, that the whole gameplay was ruined. The reason why was because my capture card messed up, and it's been messing up lately. What it will do is that I'll record, and I won't really even know that it's uh, happening to be quite honest but what will happen is that let's say you get to watch two seconds of gameplay it would skip ahead four seconds so and that's that's literally non-stop so you take like a 25 minute video and it's dumbed down to like an eight or nine minute video and it's two seconds of you watching four seconds of it skipping ahead so it's totally ruined so, and what's unfortunate about that was, like, that was the gameplay I wanted to do. So, like, today I had to get on, I mean, I was going to have it up real early in the morning, and you guys could watch it all day, but instead I had to get up, go play some more Ju Gef Juggernaut. I'm not saying I'm sick of them or anything, but I played a lot of Gef Juggernaut because I was trying to get another gameplay to um, bring out for the build video. So, I mean, I don't know, um... It's unfortunate. Hopefully, my computer stops freezing on me like nonstop, and hopefully, my uh, capture card will not have this issue anymore. That's the only thing I can do right now because I can't like buy me another computer, and I really don't have the money to buy me another capture card. So I just have to hope for the best. So try to keep that in mind, guys. Now let's talk about the Gef Juggernaut because obviously that is why you guys are watching this video. You guys really requested the Gef Juggernaut. He by far won. The only the, the one that really came in a close second would have been the Krogan Warlord. Now, I'm not going to say I'm going to do the Krogan Warlord next. In fact, I think I might do the Alliance Infiltration Unit next. The reason why is because the Alliance Infiltration Unit, in my opinion, is probably the best new one. I mean, it's an infiltrator. We all know infiltrators are really good. It has the... I mean, out of all the infiltrator builds you can make, the best ones for just the most carnage had it's always been shotgun builds. Claymore, Piranha, you know, all these things like that. Rafe is really good. She gets shotgun damage bonus. Now, I've been seeing some people comment saying that, will she be like the new uh, Gef Piranha? No. The reason why is because the Piranha has been nerfed. It only has six bullets. And the thing that made the Gef Piranha so amazing... Uh, was the overall damage, 
the accuracy bonuses from hunter mode and the rate of fire bonuses for hunter mode that's the truth guys like that is that that was what made that build so amazing so will she be on that level no but will she be extremely good with all shotguns yes so that right there makes her amazing and on top of that she gets snap freeze which is like well, one of the best powers in the game. If you uh, watched my um, Paladin video, I mean, the amount of cryo explosions you can get off a of Snap Freeze now is insanity. It's insanity. So, by her having that power, she's going to be able to do, do the same thing the Paladin used to, well, could, you know, could also do. The difference is that there's really no point anymore to use the Paladin. You could just use her. Like, she's really, honestly, the better choice. The Paladin, the only thing about him that makes him now interesting or a little unique is probably his melee. I mean, that's a cool, you know, his shield and his melee is cool. But besides that, like, I don't really think that there's really no point to use the Paladin when you could just use uh, the Alliance Infiltration Unit. So, you know, that's kind of a shame, but that's the truth of the matter. And the final thing about her is, well, her new repair matrix power is really, really amazing. It's awesome. So, you know, that that will probably be my next video. Now, I brought this up earlier, and it's very important. I highly recommend using a drill-in for your uh, armor equipment. He moves so slow, no matter what you do, but without a drill-in, he moves so much slower so you have to keep that in mind if you want to be able to move like at any type of like pay like decent pace you definitely want I mean you definitely want the adrenaline it's it's very important um, now if you were to slap on a cyclonic 4 maybe for like a platinum run I mean I don't even know if you could die practically his bonus to shields just from fitness is 130 percent which is crazy, and his base shields is 2,000, so that's why, you know, he walks away with, like, an insane amount of shields. It's 4,600, so if you were to put a Cyclonic 4 on, that would extend your shields 150% more, so your total bonus potentially could be 280% more shields, so you're talking about, like, so much shields that it, it would just take the enemy so long to drop your shields and then on top of it you could recharge your shields by doing his melee now that's one one thing about him that um you know i i haven't well of course i haven't brought it up i haven't really talked about him yet but yeah that is one very cool and interesting thing about him is that when you do his heavy melee and it's kind of strange because i was thinking that it would have been on shielded targets but honestly you can do it on a brute and you will still like walk away with your shield so keep that in mind now right there I just died my only death in the gameplay um, he can die I mean don't don't go around thinking he's invincible because he's not but at the same time it's it's pretty tough for the enemies to uh, drop you there's some really great things about this guy there's no question like uh, my favorite thing to be quite honest is um, the confidence that you have when you play with them you feel like invincible I mean it really takes away from like uh, the stress of thinking like oh, I'm, oh I hope I don't get stabbed or you know you're not gonna get stabbed you know you're not gonna get grabbed that's fantastic and against Reapers this guy is so good for your teammates when I was doing the two-man with Drew like there was so many times where the Banshees would just come after me and he would be fine he just go do his own thing and why the Banshees are just after me and the truth about Banshees is that they don't really have like that much offensive power their main uh, thing that they can do to screw the players is to grab you and when you take that away the amount of damage that they can inflict to you is kind of kind of low so they're really not a threat to this guy at all and it can really help your team if you can get those banshees on you um, and you know you could just literally walk just let them like hit you and just walk away from them and they're really not going to do much damage to you and if they're on you your teammates won't have to worry about the banshees so it's pretty awesome to be quite honest um, that's one thing that's great about him and just the sheer amount of confidence that you get from just being this ginormous tank I mean um, if you ever feel little like I mean it's like to me if I play as a Volus I feel like very unconfident I really do and it's kinda of funny cuz he's the shortest one and with this guy I feel like literally the most confident 
I feel more confident with this guy than I would with like a Gaff Infiltrator. No joke. Although the Infiltrator can kill everything so fast and I know, you know, he's so good and all these other things and the Turian's Ghost is so good. But with this guy, I'm just, I'm literally more confident. But I'm like twice the size of those guys. I don't know if that has anything to, uh, to do with it, if that plays into it. But maybe it's like state of mind or something. I don't really know. But I really do feel that way to be quite honest. Yeah, but, um, you know, as you, if you're watching this gameplay, you can see the way I like to play with them so far. Um, you know, this all this can change. This is literally day one still, so you have to remember that. But the way I feel is that his power, his uh, Siege Pulse power, is really awesome. It is awesome. It's a lot like the Biotic Orbs, honestly, but... I like it. Like, I don't like the orbs where I like this power. Um, it's just the way it is, man. Like, it, it is a very uh, interesting power. If you spam it at enemies, you can kill them, like, pretty uh, pretty quickly, to be quite honest. Um, and it's a range attack and all that. It's 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 really nice, to be quite honest. Now, the hurricane's good, too, on them. I do like the hurricane. It, it hurricane has a lot of DPS. It's a really great gun for DPS. Um, and with his recoil or his stability bonuses, you don't really get much recoil, which is great. And with that new, um, that new, uh, here's the truth. The power magnifier weapon attachments now are going to be so awesome. They really are. Um, and you, like I said, you can get it for the SMG and you, get it with, you can get it with pistols. So, I mean, any type of power based character in the game will benefit greatly from that. But the one that... All right, uh, the one thing that really stick out, that sticks out in my mind that makes me go, uh oh, is grenades. I mean, it, imagine using uh, that on arc grenades or something. Just x thirty percent more power damage, and then you slap on a um, power amplifier four, and you're walking away with like an insane amount of like extra damage for your grenades. Pretty awesome. So keep that in mind. That new attachment is great, and it does help him out a lot. Uh, when I use, I, there was one game I played where I didn't use it, and yeah, I could see a big difference of damage. Uh, Siege Pulse can pretty much, the three shots from that can almost kill, like, everything on gold, to be quite honest. Um, if you, like, um, if you hit, like, a Dragoon, it's, like, two shots, uh, probably three shots for a Pyro. So, most enemies, they, they, they die really really fast from it and it's a cool power because you feel like a fucking prime I mean think about it it's amazing um, I mean and the other big thing about this guy the main big thing is the fact that he's just so beefy he's so beefy 4600 shields is amazing 2300 health is amazing it's really hard for him to go down it, it's awesome like he's awesome in that in that aspect of course he can't run because he can't run, one thing you have to think about is, well, certain objectives could um, kind of screw you. Like, if, if the device is across the map, it's going to take you a long time to get to the device if you have to carry the pizza boxes. Honestly, I, I take that back. I think in this gameplay, maybe this gameplay, I actually do carry the box. And from what I can tell, yeah, it's actually right here, I think. Uh, what I can tell is that it doesn't really seem like I move any slower. So, you're just gonna have to walk all the way there. And, I'm not saying, like, this guy is, uh, you shouldn't do the objective with this guy. I'm not saying that. You should totally do the objective with this guy. He's good for uploads, he's great for escorts. If you let him get on, uh, the device, enemies, I mean, they try and they try and they try, but they cannot kill him. Then on top of that, what's great is that he doesn't get staggered much at all. I've been on a device and I've been hit by a brute with him. And that doesn't knock me off. If a, if a brute doesn't knock me off, I don't really think much of anything's going to be able to knock me off of the of the uh, the device. And once again, he would be pretty good for carrying the uh, the pizza boxes as well because he's so beefy. So, and I, I'm not saying don't do the objective. The only fear that you have to have is that if 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 you're doing like devices, for example, and you're like the last one left, you're going to have to literally walk potentially from one side of the map to the other side of the map and it will take you so long you're going to kill a lot of time all the enemies are going to surround you it that's the only thing to fear anyway though like i said uh overall i would say that this uh the, the juggernaut is really cool i don't want to say he's uh really really good i don't want to say he's bad i don't want to say anything 
because no matter what I say, I always get like um, criticized for it. So it's like no one understands that uh, can't I have an opinion? That that's just how it is. So I I I'm gonna stick with the whole thing that he's just really cool. I'll let you guys decide from the gameplay and from his stats and from everything I'm talking about if you think he's gonna if he if if you think he's good and then if you play with him if he's good. I'll let you guys comment away. Tell me if you do you think he's good. How do you feel? I like I said like to me like. I like him. I didn't think I was going to like him. That's the truth of the matter. I do like him, and I did not think I was going to like him. The reason why I didn't think I was going to like him was the fact he couldn't run. I was looking at him and as in the idea of my play style, and I just thought, hey, he can't run. And the other thing, too, about him that made me a little, a little questionable, like made me think that maybe I won't like him, is the fact that his powers, like his um, his uh, siege pulse power, is something I knew that would be awesome. But the hex shield, not my playstyle. The turret, I didn't, you know, offensively, it's really not that good. And defensively for him, I don't know. It just kind of gets. It, in a lot of ways, the turret can get in the way of you actually just spamming your siege pulse. That's the truth of the matter. So, a lot of times you might find yourself not using it. So. I don't know, but Siege Pulse is so good, I think, that it makes up for the lack of, like, another really am amazing secondary power for my playstyle, for just being moving around and, you know, not playing defensive or whatever, so that's just the way I look at it. So, like I said, I think he's really cool. Um, I love the fact he gives you a lot of confidence. I love the fact that Banshees can't grab him and, and uh, Phantoms can't grab him and all that. Fantastic. I love his power, Siege Pulse. It's amazing i personally think and a lot of other stuff so uh that's gonna be pretty much it though guys please like and favorite this video subscribe to me and dk and all that and uh have a nice day